everything in life has got a risk. Aniko was just sat on one of the beds in our apartment here. A 45 kilogram chandelier hit her on the back of the head. It probably would have killed her. Property goes up in value more consistently than any other asset class that I'm aware of. I bought that flat for 9,000 pounds, which is the equivalent today of about four months rent. The number one reason why people do not invest and the number one consequence of not investing is doing nothing. Welcome to this week's edition of Money Matters, because as you know by now, if you've watched this ever before, I deeply, truly believe that money actually does matter. So why do most people not choose to invest in property? There's this general fear that it's too risky, it's too dangerous, things might go wrong. I know as an engineer, there's only one perfectly safe way to do anything, and that's not do it. But even if you don't do it, or if you do nothing, there's still a risk. So let me give you a few examples to demonstrate what I'm talking about. You know when you're sat on an aeroplane and just before you take off, the crew will give you a safety demonstration, which is great. And they'll normally start off by saying something like, your safety is our number one priority. Well, that's not true, clearly, is it? Because flying has got a risk. And I'm not saying it's a big risk. I'm not saying it's a risk you shouldn't take. But if literally the number one priority of British Airways, EasyJet, Air France, whatever, was your safety, they'd say, so everybody off, we're not flying anywhere today. But they don't do that, do they? Because it is so relatively safe. So just hold that thought. Next, I want to talk about beds and how risky it is to sit on them. So last Thursday, Aniko was just sat on one of the beds in our apartment here, minding her own business, she had a laptop, she was doing a bit of work. And just like me, I've got a chandelier above my head. Now, she wasn't even thinking about it. And look what happened. Look at these pictures. A 45 kilogram chandelier fell with no warning, no noise, and hit her, fortunately only a glancing blow, on the back of the head. So naturally, we're like, Jesus Christ, are you all right? I mean, that's the number one priority, isn't it? Because she was bleeding. It's a lot of weight to come down from that high. And it completely bashed to pieces her laptop as well. Even minding your own business, in your own apartment, just sat on a bed, carries risk. Everything in life has got a risk. Now, naturally, we wanted to understand what had happened, <clears throat> because if that one fell down, we're all the rest going to start falling down. Now, what we discovered when we did that is that it was supposed to have been put up, the electrician that put it up, there's four bolts. The electrician hadn't done their job properly. They'd only used one bolt. And that bolt sheared, and of course, because there was only one bolt, smack, down it goes. So that's the equivalent, if you like, of doing property badly. So the good news out of all this, by the way, is Aniko's fine. She had a bit of a headache for a few days. She got checked out and she's actually fine. And last Thursday is now officially her second birthday because she didn't die. <laughs> so, and I'm not, I mean, I'm being serious and I'm not. I'm very relieved. If the chandelier had just been a few inches this way or a few centimeters this way, it probably would have killed her. I often say that because I've had in the past near-death experiences, see previous videos, I live every day as if it's my last because one day I'm going to be right. People often don't invest in property because they're scared, they don't know what to do, which is a bit like that electrician putting the chandelier up but only using one bolt instead of four. They're doing it wrong. So as long as you've got somebody to help you do it correctly and secure, a secure property investment, a secure chandelier, that's why I'm quite happy sat under this one. I don't think I'm about to die because it's been checked. It's been put up properly and this one's been double checked as well. So imagine that every time you made a property investment, it wasn't only done correctly, but you had someone double checking it, like, you know, one of Touchstone's coaches to make sure it's just right and to make sure it's not dangerous. If you're at that point that you're thinking, well, I've got some money and I want to do something because I need a return. You know, I want to retire. I want to look after the kids. Or I want to take a holiday. I want to do something. Doing nothing with your money is fundamentally risky. I made a video a few months ago now talking about Bitcoin. So I invested 1.9 million in cryptocurrencies of various kinds. And people thought, oh, you're crazy, you're nutcase. And for me, yes, it's risk, 
but it's an acceptable risk. It's about 5% of my net worth. So I would always say that it's not a crazy idea to speculate, to go into a high risk investment with say five, maximum 10% of you know, whatever you're worth, your savings or whatever, as long as you're not borrowing to do it. And at the time I made the video, I suppose the punchline was I invested 1.9 million. It dropped at one point to about 780,000 or something. So I lost about 1.1 million. By the time I recorded the video, previous video, it had gone back so that I was kind of, I broke even. But now, today, is worth 2.318 million. I made an investment, 1.9 million. It dropped to about 800,000, so I lost 1.1 million. Now it's not only recovered, but I'm up, what's that? 418,000 pounds. Now, many people won't even make 418,000 pounds to put it into their pension fund. And I've done that in the last few weeks. So when I look, at the number one thing that stops people investing, fear, danger, you know, all that sort of stuff. Is crypto for the normal person? A little bit, yes. But is it their major investment? No. Stocks and shares, can they do very well? Yes. Can they do very badly? Sadly, yes. I talk about wealth through property a lot because property goes up in value more consistently than any other asset class that I'm aware of. And it does it in two ways. The capital value goes up, like shares would, or like crypto would, or you know, whatever. But you also get monthly rent. You're gonna get a good, healthy monthly cash flow as well. So look here, this is 269A Roman Road, East Ham. Some of you are saying, yeah, 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 Paul, I know, I know, I know. You bought it in 1982, yes, for 9,000 pounds, yes, I did. And it's now worth more than 300,000. That property that I bought 42 years ago, the average rent in London now is roughly 2,200 to 2,300 pounds a month. I bought that flat for 9,000 pounds, which is the equivalent today of about four months rent. So just let that sink in. So when I say as safe as houses, imagine in 30 or 40 years time, the property that you could buy today for 300,000, because that's the average price of the average house in the UK, you didn't because you thought it was too expensive. Imagine how sick you're gonna feel in 30 years time when the average rent is 75 grand a month. I ain't talking cloud cuckoo land. All I'm doing is saying the next 40 years, I like the last 40 years. But you know what? I think because of the amount of money printing, because of the amount of inflation, prices are gonna go up a lot faster over the next 40 years than they have over the previous 40 years. But that's a topic for a different day. So I suppose what I've done today on this week's Money Matters is I've taken a little sneak peek into the world of mindset. And I'm challenging you each and every one of you that think property is too risky. I just want you to think about Aniko and her second birthday when she was sitting on a bed and a chandelier hit her. And it was that far away from being, never mind a birthday, it could have been a funeral. And I really do thank the universe that we've had that close, narrow escape because what reminds you more of the value of life if it's not a brush with death. I'm really making this video because I wanna try and offer you that lesson without you or your loved ones having to go through it. I don't want you to be the person that has a, you know, a physical accident or loses a load of money on stocks and shares or arguably even worse, doesn't invest at all and can never afford to retire. So in leaving you today, I just want to leave you with this question. If you carry on doing what you're doing, can you please put in the comments below the age at which you'll be able to retire, according to your calculations, not mine, and tell me how much you think per month you're going to be able to retire on. Because I want to challenge you to this. Whatever figure you think it is, I want you to triple it. Because if you're 10, 20 years away from it now, by the time you actually get there, prices are gonna be two, 300% higher. My answer, because I do like to leave you with an answer always, is don't panic. Don't spend your life looking up at chandeliers in case they hit you on the head. 
Live your life. Do what it is you want to do. Because if you live every second in fear of something happening to you, you're not going to have a very fulfilling life. And if you want the money to give you the choices, because money matters, I would strongly suggest that you consider investing in property. I'm going to say what I've said before many times. I'm 60 this year. I left home at the age of 17 with 170 pounds. I now live here in Monaco. You can too. Wherever you're starting from has got nothing to do with wherever you end up. As always, be safe out there. You're wonderful. I'm Paul. See you next time.